everybody! In today's video, we're going to look at diffusion and osmosis, and it was designed for you to watch this video before the lab. But if you watch it after the lab, it's okay. It still will further your understanding of diffusion and osmosis. Hopefully. So let's talk about diffusion. Diffusion is Latin for to spread apart or to scatter. And it's when molecules move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The world would look pretty bizarre if diffusion didn't take place. So you are well aware of diffusion, you just might not be aware of the actual term that's used. So let's look at a, an application. So imagine an aquarium tank. So this is a cartoon of an aquarium tank. And in the aquarium tank, you poured some dye at one end so that the dye is really concentrated at this end. So we have an area of high concentration because of the dye molecules that are there. And then if you look at the other end of the tank, it's an area of low concentration because you didn't put any dye on that end of the tank. So if I asked you what's going to happen over time, you probably were already know the answer, those molecules are going to spread apart. So those molecules spread in the direction of high concentration to low concentration. So that's simple diffusion, anything that moves from high concentration to low concentration. So the major goal for diffusion really is to make the system reach equilibrium. So now the system has reached equilibrium and it's stable. You mean these molecules will still be moving and bumping into each other and bumping into the sides of the tank, but they're equally distributed. If I asked you now which one is the solvent and which one is the solute, would you be able to answer this question? So just pause the video and try and see if you can answer it. And whenever I pose questions in the videos, that's a good idea to do. So always pause it and then resume to check your answer. Okay, so the solvent, like I said in the previous videos, is water. So water is a universal solvent. So in this case, water would be the solvent and the solute would be the green molecules. So the solvent is the solution that does the dissolving and the solute is the molecule that gets dissolved into the solvent. Let's think about some real world applications of where you see diffusion taking place. So take a moment and think about that and then you can click play to see if, um, if we overlap on any ideas. Okay, so uh, one of the examples that I can think of is perfume. So if you ever walked into a room and smelled something wonderful or maybe something foul, in any, any case, you are smelling molecules that came from a particular odor that diffused into the atmosphere and hit your nose, right? And you could smell it. So this is a concentrated solution, okay? So you can imagine this, the molecules are existing here in high concentration. And as it's being sprayed into the atmosphere, it's slowly diffusing until eventually it reaches equilibrium. Another example is smoke. So whenever you see smoke, it's really concentrated when it first comes out of this cigarette, for example. And you can, even in this picture, you can start to see it diffusing into the atmosphere where it's going to go from high concentration here to an area of low concentration because in the atmosphere, there aren't any of those molecules. So it is going, it's diffusing into the atmosphere. Another example would be if you've ever boiled water and put tea in your water, the tea bag has a high concentration of tea and then the tea is is moving from that high concentration to that area of low concentration which is the hot water that submerged in another example in biology would be your lungs so if you looked at your lungs your lungs have a high amount of oxygen and the blood vessels that surround the lungs have a low amount of oxygen so the oxygen will move from high to low so it's going to move from your lungs to your blood vessels and this happens naturally without even you thinking about it okay you you rely on diffusion for survival so we have diffusion taking place so that your blood vessels get the oxygen that it needs another example would be if you take sugar and you dissolve it into water so in this case, we have a beaker full of water that is actively dissolving a sugar cube so that eventually it reaches equilibrium. Now, do you think that diffusion requires energy? Well, the answer to that question is no. It does not require energy. And diffusion is a type of passive transport. So passive transport is when no energy is required to move molecules. And this is different than active transport, and active transport does require energy to move molecules. We're not going to talk about active transport in this video, we're only going to talk about passive transport, where no energy is required. So another thing I want to talk about 
before we get into the other types of diffusion, is what a semipermeable membrane is. So a semipermeable membrane is also known as a selective permeable membrane. So you'll hear both of those terms in biology. And it's a membrane that can allow only certain molecules to pass through, but not all molecules. So just like how the name implies, it's semi-permeable because it only lets some molecules through, or selectively permeable because it selects which molecules are going to pass through. So some examples of semi-permeable membranes would be a dialysis bag. And dialysis tubing uh, is tubing that has pores, so it's a porous tubing, but the pores are microscopic and it can allow only certain molecules to pass through. Another example, one that we are using in biology, would be the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is semi-permeable. This is a cell itself, and we're zooming in at the membrane. So this membrane here is semi-permeable. It doesn't really look semi-permeable. It kind of looks like it's not permeable at all, but it is, and this isn't a great picture. It kind of looks more like this, where you see pores existing inside the cell membrane. This is a protein channel that's embedded in the cell membrane. And this protein channel acts almost like a window where it can allow certain molecules to pass through. Now these channels can open and close and regulate which molecules are going to pass through. This is an example of facilitated diffusion. We see facilitated diffusion taking place whenever we're talking about cell membranes. But sometimes it can be simple diffusion. Rarely, though, it's, it's simple diffusion. It's usually going to be facilitated. Um, an example of sim simple diffusion that you might see across the cell membrane would be the exchange of gases, like oxygen and CO2. So oxygen and CO2, they don't require a protein channel for it to move. Instead, it can just pass through the membrane by simple diffusion. And larger molecules like glucose, they need a protein channel to pass through. And the reason why this is called facilitated diffusion is because this protein channel is helping or facilitating the movement of these molecules. So in facilitated diffusion, it's still going from high concentration to low concentration. So imagine that this end, it's high, high concentration of glucose, and at this end, it's a low concentration of glucose. So it's still moving from high to low. It's just that now it needs a helper. It needs a protein channel for it to do so. And that's facilitated diffusion. Okay, so I want to give you an example of another type of diffusion. So imagine a beaker full of water that is now separated by a semi-permeable membrane. So I put a semi-permeable membrane and separated these two compartments. It just has pure water. And then what I wanted to do is pour some sugar in both of these compartments such that I have 5% sugar in this compartment and 20% sugar in this compartment. So this side, it's more concentrated and it's a little more sweet than this side. Okay, so how will this system reach equilibrium? In order for you to answer this question, you have to look at the molecules that are involved in this system. So there are two major molecules involved in the system. The first one would be sugar, or we'll just say glucose. So glucose is Relatively, it's a small molecule, but in this system, it's the largest molecule, and we're comparing it to that of water. So water is the other molecule in this system. So between these two molecules, glucose is the larger molecule. So we have those two molecules at hand. Now let's look at the semipermeable membrane. So the semipermeable membrane is porous, and if you look at these holes, because these holes represent the pores that exist in this membrane, and you compare the size of these pores to the size of these molecules, you can easily determine that sugar can pass through because sugar is much bigger than these pores, but water can pass through. So just by looking at these molecules and then looking at these pores in the membrane, we can say that, well, water will move through. Okay, we can see that water will move through because water is small enough to move through. Sugar won't move through, so this is a situation where solutes will stay put, but we're only going to see the movement of water. So now take a moment and think about what direction water will move. Okay, will it move to the right or will it move to the left? Remember, we're, this system is trying to reach equilibrium. So how can we reach equilibrium? Well, both of these concentrations have to be equal. So if you thought about it, and if you thought it's going to move to the right, Good job. So it's going to move from the 5% to the 20%. This is just water movement. 
moving. Why is that going to happen? Because this is a concentrated solution. We want to dilute this solution so that we can decrease this concentration. And we want to remove water from this side so that we can increase this concentration so that eventually this will reach about 12%. So they're going to be equal now. So in order for that to happen though, water had to be removed from this system and moved into this system. If you've ever made syrup, you've taken a pot of water, put sugar in it, and then boiled it. What you're doing is you're evaporating water from the system so that you make the solution more concentrated. And that's the same concept that's going on as when you take water out of the system to make it more concentrated. And then you had to add water into the system to make it more dilute. The osmotic pressure here is strong enough to hold water to this height and it's due to this osmotic pressure that water molecules won't flow out into the system. Because remember, this is a porous membrane. So if you were thinking, whoa, this looks bizarre because these have pores, why isn't water moving out? Well, it's because there's osmotic pressure and it's strong enough to prevent water from moving out. So the next thing, so the system has reached equilibrium. So the next question I want to ask you is, was energy required? And the answer to that question is no, it was not required because this will happen naturally. This is a situation where you can um, put this system just as it is, walk away, and you'll see this happen. You don't have to add any energy. You don't have to add any energy into the system. It does not require energy. So what is the name of the process that enabled the system to reach equilibrium called? So if you were thinking diffusion, good, because it is diffusion, but more specifically, it's a type of diffusion called osmosis. And for those who know osmosis Jones, I put them in there. So osmosis is specifically the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane in the direction of low solute concentration to high solute concentration. So let's take a look at that one more time. So that's the movement of water. It is a type of diffusion, if you remember going back to the definition of diffusion, it's from high to low concentration. When we're thinking about osmosis, you can think about it in two different ways. You can think about the water molecules. It is still moving from high to low concentration if you refer just to the water molecules. In this side, it's high concentration of water molecules, and on this side, it's a low concentration of water molecules. So it is still moving from high to low if you look at the water molecules themselves. But often in biology, it's defined by defining the solute concentration. So that's why I talked about solute concentration because you hear that a lot in biology. So you just note that you can define it in two ways. You can say from high to low concentration of the water molecules. So if you did that, that's perfectly fine. Or you can say from the low solute concentration to the high solute concentration. Okay, so remember, that's the movement of water and it'll move into this compartment here, diluting that compartment and making it reach equilibrium. All right, so now let's just summarize the types of diffusion. We have simple diffusion, and that's, um, I, this was completely by accident, the green perfume and these green molecules. So remember, molecules will spread from high to low. No membrane is required for simple diffusion. Okay, you don't need a membrane. Um, that's the first type. The second type is facility diffusion. And I'd like to also think about it, if you've ever been to a border control and you ever want to cross into Canada or into Mexico, you have to cross by a border. And this border is kind of facilitating the diffusion process because it has to stop and regulate the amount of people coming through. That's the same idea of what's going on in the cell, is that these pores kind of act as little regulators. So it's still diffusion because it's a very broad definition that describes anything that moves from high to low concentration, but through the help of a protein channel in the membrane. So whenever we think about facility diffusion, it's always going to be associated with protein channels in a membrane. Okay, and the third type of diffusion is osmosis. And this is just kind of going back to the low concentrated to the high concentrated solution. So water is going to move in this direction. And it's all in the name of achieving equilibrium. Okay, so I hope that was helpful and keep studying.